coming fresh off from the death of some shady album reaction when i was listening to the album i know there's a lot of disses on that album so i said now is the perfect time to actually do all the disses explain um by this time unless you've been living under rock you done heard the album you done heard the disses so i thought this would be a great time to actually check out the disses and how they was explained but before we get into this video if you didn't hit the like button make sure you apply some pressure to that like button if you didn't hit the subscribe button make sure you apply some pressure to that subscribe button if you didn't leave a comment make sure you leave a comment Comment. So what I'll follow do, let's get into this video. Chi Chi, get the yayo. Yeah, yeah. Sam's 12th studio album, The Death of Slim Shady. As this album has created a storm in the music world that Facts. only few other records <laughs> have been able to match this year. One of the reasons why few other records will be able to match this year. I don't think no records that's coming out uh, this year will be able to match this. Anyone that's going to come close is probably going to be the Kendrick Lamar uh, project. But this right here, I said it time and time again, this right here was the best album to come out so far this year. No cap. If you say anything otherwise, you're just a hater this has been is because of all of the name drops and disses eminem throws out on this album Facts. which from newfound haters longtime rivals and all the way to people who m has been waiting to unleash his lyrical wrath on for decades <laughs> yeah. there are few albums in the catalog of marshall mathers that can compare to this project in terms of the sheer amount of jabs being thrown right out in other people's faces and Facts. from name drops that are it's a lot of name drops in this uh, album. The only person I could say that come close to the name drops is the game from California. It should be signed at 50 Cent. He name drops like every song. He name drops two or three. If you get a game song, you know you're getting two or three name drops in there. And that remind me of this because there's a lot of name drops in this. Meant to poke fun, not to some of his greatest competition as a rapper, and to the jabs that are so lyrically insane that yeah. they may just start the next all out rap. Mm. Eminem did not hold back in any regard when it came he to did. delivering his final performance as Slim Shady, but before we can start to look at all of the major callouts on this record, I think it's important to make one thing clear. Now, with all of the verbal attacks on this album, one thing that certain corners of the internet are forgetting at this point is that there is a clear line between people that Eminem is poking lightly and who he actually wants to escalate a full-on conflict with. I agree. Everybody he's not taking jabs at. Some people he just being comedic about it he's making people smirk put a smile on their face by name and certain stuff i don't think it's complete jabs it's just what eminem always did if you listen to eminem um the way i listen to eminem he's been doing this his whole career so it really didn't surprise me to hear the name drop especially when the rollout for the album kept talking about how eminem's gonna get canceled uh you should have known that there was to be a lot of name drops in that because we know with this album eminem said yo i'm gonna get canceled and even at the beginning of the uh the rollout paul was like yo i'm not dealing with this i don't want nothing to do with this this, so we already knew it was gonna be a bunch of name drops and as even despite eminem stating that this record is a concept album and that it needs to be listened to in its proper context for it to make total sense this that's why i keep hearing people saying like for the album to make sense to you completely you have to listen to the album um the last song all the way up into the first i haven't did that yet but i definitely plan on doing that to see what everyone's talking about um the way it goes when you listen to it in reverse because i listen to it from beginning to end it hasn't stopped major personalities in hip-hop media like DJ Academics from taking M's words out of the place they were supposed to be read in and using them to push his own personal agenda. It's and this crazy. happened most prevalently with the bars on the intro track Renaissance where it says, Kendrick's album was cool, but it didn't have any bangers. And it's like when I heard the album, I knew exactly uh, what he was doing. He was just saying, no matter what you do, the critics, even your fans going to have something um, bad to say about it. And if you look at my album reaction, a couple stands uh, said something that was negative. And I was like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you go look at the video, um, somebody in my comment section said, yeah, this album cool, but it don't got no uh, replay value. And the time I seen that, I'm like, yo, this is what M was talking about. No matter what he's do. Even his fans are going to have something negative to say about it. So he was basically just saying that about all the other rappers. No matter what you do or what you write for your fans, some of your fans are going to have no something negative to say about it. And you can't do nothing about it. At least M was already prepared for it and he already know um, what's going to come with it. While Act tried to pull a quick one on social media and make people think that Eminem is dissing Kendrick Lamar to try to shift the spotlight from all of the negative attention surrounding Drake. When you actually look... I never thought about that, but that do uh, make sense because he's trying to shift attention. We all know 99.9% .9 of people say Kendrick Lamar won that uh, with Drake. You know, 
DJ Academics is not trying to say uh, Drake lost. He said it, but he's kind of like backpelling on it, and he's letting you know that he's Team Drake. So anything he could do to get the spotlight off of Kendrick Lamar and Drake, he's going to try to put that um, Eminem against Kendrick Lamar. And I, it figures to me, like, he's like, yo, my favorite rapper, Drake, just got dusted by Kendrick Lamar. Let me try to get something going between Eminem and Kendrick. Since Drake couldn't do nothing with Kendrick, let's see if Eminem could actually do something with Kendrick. And he was trying to stir something up. Look at this bar for what it is. From M's voice on the track, which is delivering this bar in a tone that is mocking another voice, to the lyrics then literally being transcribed in quotations to express Damn. that Eminem is not saying this, but instead quoting somebody else. Right. When you look at what this album is actually standing for, beyond the sensationalism of social media, yeah. it's clear that this name drop and also the bars where he says, Wayne's album or Ye's couldn't tell which one was lamer, mm. Joyner's album was corny, Shady's new stuff is way worse, everything is either too tame and there's too much anger. I didn't like the beat, so I hated Mike Delete later. It's clearly a way of M paying. And it's definitely, if you listen to rap, you know anything about rap. When you heard them bars, you should have known that Eminem was not coming at them. If you heard the bars earlier, you got to put everything in context. You take one or two bars, and then you could paint any picture you want. But if you take the whole 16 bars, you know exactly what he was talking about. It was common sense. It wasn't even that hard. You could tell because um, nobody's really saying that stuff that was in the song. He's just saying this was some of the fans going to say. No matter what you give them, you could give them a... A diamond album and they still are gonna nitpick and find stuff wrong with it in homage to Kendrick Lil Wayne yay J Cole and Joyner Lucas but with all of the confusion around these lines through the misinformation that academics is spreading Bozo. I think it's just important to make it clear that none of these name drops were disses and as right. he goes on to express later in the track Eminem is actually defending all of these rappers from the constant criticism that seems to be always getting echoed throughout. It was definitely like the uh, common criticism that you be hearing. And it reminded me of when Eminem was talking about, um, when he was talking about the Migos, he said sooner or later they're going to say bye to the Migos or they're going to leave future in the past tense. And he said, Drake, even the same thing is going to happen to you. And not only did he say it, we've seen it happen to Drake um, this year. I never thought that Eminem bar would actually come to life when he was like, Drake, so one day they're going to turn on you because that's just an old song and they still haven't turned on Drake at this point but in this year in 2024 a lot of people have turned on him and this is exactly what Eminem was talking about in that song that he put out so long ago sooner or later they're gonna move past you throughout the internet and now while Eminem shouts out all of these rappers in support of what they do right. one of the most interesting things we find out later in the project through a subliminal diss is Eminem's stance on who won the beef between Kendrick Lamar and Drake because on the track Lucifer M compares himself to Kendrick as he says that beefing with him is just as unwise of a thing to do as beefing with Lamar. Which And that is a cold bar, and that is so true. It was so long in the industry where nobody would mention Eminem's name at all when it came to beef, some rap beef, none of that. They were scared shitless to mention this man's name, and that's the position Kendrick Lamar holds right now. People are scared to mention this man's name because he took out the number one pop star in the world, and he made it look easy. If he could make that look easy... That easy with Drake, what can he do with your normal rapper? It wouldn't be good. Which clearly implies that Eminem sees Kendrick Lamar as one of the only rappers who is on his level. And while this isn't a direct wow. diss to Drake, it's just showing to the world another major player in the hip hop world who thinks that Drake yeah. just got humiliated by Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. But now moving past this and into some more direct lyrical jabs, another rapper Eminem references on this album twice is Megan Thee Stallion with Shit. both the line on Houdini. If I yeah. was to ask Megan Thee Stallion if she would collab with me, would I really have a shot at a feat? Would I really have a shot at a feature? And he did mention her name twice. I was surprised that he mentioned uh, Magnum um, Stallion uh, name twice on the album, but the way he did it was real clever. If I was to ask Megan Thee Stallion if she would collab with me, would I really have a, <laughs> have a shot, shot at, at a feature? feature. And it's earlier crazy. in the album's track list, he brings up her name again, saying, because I can spit a bar so hard, Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj will scissor, which mm. in of itself is one of the most clever lyrics on the entire album, but with this bar. That was crazy. Meg Thee Stallion, Nicki Minaj with Scissor. Um, he used Scissor, who's another artist, but he's been like Scissors, which I thought was crazy.
That was tough. Which in of itself is one of the most clever lyrics on the entire yeah. album, but with this bar, while it's not inherently a diss, with Megan being in the category of people whose name was brought up more than once on this album and whose controversial issues like her incident with Tory Lanez are being directly referenced, yeah. to audiences who are not as familiar with Slim Shady and Megan alike, this can be seen as more than just playfully chaotic banter that's being used to create that crazy Slim Shady chaos, and who knows, with Megan showing that she is not afraid to clap back at mass of names in the industry like Nicki Minaj and yeah she definitely showed um Mega Stallion uh, she came at uh Nicki Minaj she came at Drake which we know are our two uh heavy hitters um in the game and I was uh surprised at how much uproar when um he dropped Houdini and Mega Stallion name was on it that had Twitter on fire that had Instagram on fire that had social media on fire um about that bar and people just took it too far it's like yo he's too old to be talking about uh Mega Stallion it's like yo just comedy it's just fun it's just M being M Get your panties out of a bunch. With Megan showing that she is not afraid to clap back at massive at names all. in the industry like Nicki Minaj and Drake, it will be interesting to see how she handles being. And I was surprised that Meg never said anything about none of this. People spoke for Meg, but Meg herself had never came out to say anything. And I think she take it like I take it. It was just a little jab. It was just him being funny. He doesn't have a problem with Meg the Stallion. They doesn't have any beef. They probably never even seen each other in real life. Um, but it would be dope if these two did a song together somewhat of a lyrical focal point on this LP. And speaking of people who are lyrical focal points, the most referenced person on this entire project is not a rapper or a longtime foe of Eminem, who is it? but it's Caitlyn Jenner. So who over man. and over again, Eminem references when he is trying to depict the true. Is anyone surprised M was going at Caitlyn Jenner? If you know anything about M and you know who Caitlyn Jenner is, you're not even surprised that he was going at at them. The person on this entire project is not a rapper or a longtime foe of Eminem, but it's Caitlyn Jenner it's who crazy. over and over again, Eminem references when he is trying to depict the true nature of who Slim Shady really is, and while referencing her about almost 10 times on Damn. this project is definitely excessive. When we look at the concept- I listened to the album. I didn't even know it was 10 times that the name was mentioned, but that is a lot to mention one person name uh, 10 times, but I'll just let you know uh, the stature that that person on. If Eminem mentioned your name 10 times, that means to like, yo, you're really doing something out here of this album and what the message Eminem is trying to depict as he revisits the Slim Shady character. I think it's safe to say that Eminem doesn't actually have any sort of real issues with Caitlyn Jenner yeah. and that this was all to just play into the concept of the album and the fact yeah. that Slim Shady can no longer exist in the year 2024. Yeah. Now with that being said, with Caitlyn's name being brought up so much on this project, it will be interesting to see how the media handles Eminem doing this going forward and if she will even feel a way about it as a whole. Now another person that is being... I mean, personally, I didn't hear anything um, about it. I'm all over social media. I didn't really hear anyone bring up anything, and I didn't hear Caitlyn Jenner say nothing about it either, which is uh, crazy. If your name mentioned 10 times, you think you would have said something, tweeted something, but it'd been absolutely uh, radio silence. Dissed within a similar way on this project is Lizzo, who ended up targets by coming at her appearance with the bars on the track Road Rage. Ain't never really truly over till Lizzo sings, which... That was tough. It ain't over to the fat lady sing. We all know Lizzo's known for being that big girl. She likes being a big girl. Um, she's making big girls look good, giving big girls confidence by the way she dressing, smelling, all that type of stuff. So I think it's uh, dope that that happened. Bars on the track Road Rage ain't never really truly over till <laughs> Lizzo, Lizzo sings, sings. Which in a string of major name drops that have made for headlines that span much further than the general rap world. This is another major moment on this record where Slim Shady calls out Lizzo and then uses the rest of this track to go on a whole rant. As we should be extra nice instead of honest and instead of exercise it's easy to find a triple X. <laughs> And try to press aside to change so you don't have to change. That was tough. He's just saying, yo, it's easier to get to get big clothes instead of uh, hitting the gym. And remind me of the Kendrick Lamar Drake thing when he was like, yo, don't go to surgery. Just go to the gym, do some push ups, uh, eat right. You don't have to do all that. And it's almost like the same thing Emma's saying on this record where Slim Shady calls out Lizzo and then uses the rest of this track to go on a whole rant about the lifestyle that she seems to promote. And while there are layers of sarcasm in this, the line of what is satire and what's serious is kind of blurred here because Eminem's vocals are not edited in the Slim Shady voice in the same manner that some of the other disses on the record are. And beyond just this, with the way this album's already being pulled out of context, and as a result, the way its lyrics are being judged without understanding the larger story regardless. 
While this doesn't appear to be a lyric that Eminem is saying with any sort of true anger or animosity, right. only time will tell if Lizzo recognizes this as a fair thing to say in an artistic statement or if she will feel disrespected by M's harsh words. And with the way she- I would like to know um, her, her viewpoint on it. She haven't said anything um, so far. It's like when we say words, we don't intentionally mean to hurt anyone or we don't mean for them to take it any type of way, but I don't take how they actually feel about it or felt about it um, when they heard that. The only person that knows that um, is her. She has responded to other satirical jokes about her. I would <laughs> expect this to go pretty bad. Now, mm. a long-running target of Slim Shady's that is brought back here all the way to the point where he has an entire song dedicated to him in Brand New Dance is Christopher Reeves. Damn, and while it's very confusing it. on the surface why Eminem is dissing the late actor who was best known for portraying Superman. It's like in rap, when you're thinking of certain bars, you're going to think of people that was in them situation. If you think about somebody paralyzed, you know, I heard Christopher Reeves' name in all throughout rap, not from just Eminem. You heard it in battle rap. You heard it from other uh, rappers because when we think of someone paralyzed, the first person we think of, unfortunately, is Christopher Reeves. We do get more context on why this happened, which is actually explained later on the album's climax as Eminem and Slim Shady go head to head on Guilty Conscience 2. Crazy. Where we find out that Brand New Dance was a song recorded. And I know that Chris Reed's song was recorded in 2004 for Encore F. You take it all for Eminem because he. Mm, that just got the bulls on purpose to ruin this song for us. It's crazy. In 2004 for Eminem's project Encore. And the track never came out because Reeves passed around the time it would have been released. But even back then, there was never any actual recorded beef. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was on the album. Yeah, because it was like, why didn't you release the, uh, why didn't you, you had a song, Christopher, talking about Christopher Lee's, why didn't you release it? And he said, because he passed away. And I didn't think that was a diss on him. He's like, yo, he wasn't here. I didn't think it was real tasteful for me to release that song when he just passed. That would have been a big uproar um, if he did that. So shout out to him for not releasing that and just keeping that in the vault. Eminem and Christopher Reeves and throughout many of his albums, songs, and freestyles during the golden age of his career. Eminem would just use his name time after time yeah. to stir up that classic Slim yeah. Shady controversy. And when you dig a little deeper into M's life after time to stir Yo, up that classic- He's saying Christopher Reeves wouldn't sit for this neither. That is crazy. Classic Slim Shady controversy. And when you dig a little deeper into M's life, it's also pretty easy to find out that Eminem was a big fan of superheroes and Superman included. So in a strange, very Slim Shady like way, I think on some level, we can assume that by mentioning Christopher Reeves on this album, it's his own one of a kind way of saluting somebody that he respects, no matter how disrespectful it may seem without the proper. Yeah, we all know, like, the first Superman I ever knew, I known was Christopher Reeves. And just like Eminem, I came up on watching that stuff. I used to couldn't wait every Saturday uh, to watch the X-Men, Spider-Man, um, all them action figures type of stuff. Batman, I've seen every Batman movie um, ever made. It's just how we just grew up on that type of stuff. Proper context. Now, looking at more rappers that Eminem subliminally dissed on this album, while there are a lot of celebrity name drops throughout the album, some that are direct disses and some that are just using the celebrities' likenesses to allude to something Eminem is trying to portray, yeah. there were also some hidden lyrical signals targeted to other rappers that were secret ways of Eminem challenging some of his greatest peers and at the top of this list mm. is none other than Jay-Z, who Jay -Z. on the track Toby gets called out by Eminem through some pretty clever wordplay that references where Jay-Z- Now my state's in the building. I done slept on more floors in the Empire State Building. We know uh, Jay-Z had the song um, Empire, um, New York City, Empire State Building. I got so many stories, but I hate selling. I didn't even know. Um, they was telling me later in the comment section um, on the Toby video when he had his face smashed up against the glass and it had his nose like this. Um, people were saying that was at Jay-Z. I didn't catch it at first when I first reacted to it, but when I went and revisited the video after reading a couple comments, it was definitely um, a shot at J Z. He is from, which also happens to be the exact name of his most iconic song. Yeah. And then Eminem questions how Jay Z could be higher up on an all time list than him if M has absolutely watched Jay before on a track together, which is of course referring to Jay Z's track off the Blueprint Renegade. In yeah, definitely a lot of people say that uh, Eminem beat Jay Z on Renegade, or people say it's Ty, or some people say uh, Jay Z beat him. And I can see why Eminem would question. Um, Jay-Z being higher than him because to me, Jay-Z did not make timeless music. When the music was out and the album was dropping, it was fire. I liked the, everything that he was dropping at that time. When you go revisit Jay-Z music, it doesn't hit the same. It wasn't like timeless music. That's something that you could listen to. Like I still 
because I still got some Pac in my playlist. I still got some Big. You could go back to their music. It's timeless music. I don't have any Jay-Z on my playlist because to me, none of his music is timeless. Even if you go to like the latest stuff that he put out and you listen to it, it's not timeless music. It was just, for that time, it was hot. But it's nothing that you could really go revisit. In which Eminem delivered one of the greatest feature verses ever. Yeah. Now, I have another video breaking down this song and how Eminem also dissed Melly Eminem Mel for not. being a hater, and how he subliminally threw breaking down this song and how Eminem also dissed Melly Mel. Yo, Melly Mel, this, we on steroids? This guy like twice of my age, right? Yo, he. On them roids. For being a hater, and how he subliminally threw shots at Drake and J. Cole through the track's mm. branding, tagline, and cover art. So definitely watch that after this if you want to see how layered that song really is in of itself. But gotcha. continuing to look at some of the other rappers that got some lyrical attention from Eminem. Another name who was mentioned multiple times after being defended as an artist on the intro track is Kanye West. Kanye. And through two different lines that talk about Kanye going- Brain is dead, space cadet, like when ye forgets. <laughs> he said, yo, if ye don't take his meds, he a space cadet. That's crazy. You hearing a lot of people call Kanye crazy. Going off the deep end in their own way. While some have assumed that Eminem is trying to shade Ye or call him out for some of the things that he has done over the past few years. I think when you look at these references in context of the- There's no way you could deny that it was some shade uh, thrown. I don't really think the Lizzo one was really uh, shade, but that right there, everyone called Kanye cr uh, crazy. I remember a little, what did Lil Dirk say? He said uh, something like calling Kanye uh, crazy. You hear Meek Mill did it. You hear everyone at some point then called Kanye crazy. The story on the album. Eminem is using Ye's name to just add to the controversial nature of the record and to just further bring to life the Slim Shady character with a person whose name in of itself inflicts so much emotion, which is something yeah. that Eminem has done in the past on a song like No Love all the way back in 2000. Man, get these whack off stage. Where the, is Kanye West? Woo! That was tough. Get these whack niggas off stage. Where Kanye West when we need him? We know that's a Taylor Swift thing when he came and took the thing from Taylor Swift. Said Beyonce had the uh, video of the year. I think that's crazy. And I liked how he put that um, in there. And like I said, a lot of stuff he's doing is just comedic. It's just funny um, when he does it. 2010 on Recover. And if anything, the person who got the worst part of these Ye lines was Kim Kardashian. Mm. As Eminem said, they want to see me going off the deep end like Ye. Rather see me do like Kim Kardashian, they say, and find a way to really get rid of all this Ray J. Which really makes mm. her the target and punk. That was tough to get rid of all this rage, but he was talking about uh, Ray J. Just the way Eminem could just play off words is just why he is who he is. Um, That rage and that Ray J was just crazy and find a way to really get rid of all this Ray J, which really makes her the target and punchline of this joke, if anything, in one of the most clever and hilarious ways possible. And that's, I like the way he worded that. He said, in this joke, because if you know Eminem, he jokes around a lot. It's not nothing to take serious. It's just a joke. Now, while all the disses we have looked at so far in the grand scheme of Eminem's lyrics and intentions are meant to be taken as more of a joke or even a Facts. sign of mutual respect in yeah. some instances, yeah. as opposed to threats that are trying to escalate something much bigger. And a good portion of the remaining celebrity name drops when it comes to people who have been involved in recent contracts. When them rappers like Jada bring out the will in you, cause now my slaps harder than will do slap harder than will do and that's just gonna be a bar you're gonna keep hearing the hip-hop time and time again we done heard it a bunch of times and we're still hearing it the will jada slap just like when you think of somebody getting slapped you're gonna think about that will smith chris rock situation it just is what it is controversies are only here to make fun of public figures who have made some very horrible choices shady as bill taking a pill and putting it in a soft drink because something off and i don't know what's the cause be and i like how he did that in the album he said the cause be we all know he's talking about cosby um but once again it's how he play up the words um and i like the way he do that the next disses we are going to be looking at are ones that are meant to create serious ripples not just through the rap world but through the people who he seriously has a problem with and in this regard one of the biggest targets here is mgk, <laughs> MGK. who gets dissed on the track bad one we're in a moment on the album where Eminem is rapping through his own conscience and not Slim Shady's. He goes on to say, But I gotta keep going Tyson on Kelly. Mm. I bodied him twice and already. 
That little mother back throwing subs like a food fight at the deli. Yo, that is tough. I gotta go hard on Kelly like Tyson. We know Mike Tyson was known for uh, knocking people out. And then he said he's still throwing subs like, like he in the deli. That's cool. Food fight at the deli. Throwing subs. Crazy. And already. That little mother back throwing subs like a food fight at the deli. That was hard. And while earlier on the album on the track Guilty Conscience 2, Eminem is so sick of Slim Shady that he says he is willing to end the beef with some of the biggest names in his career who- Christopher, MGK, Nick, and the Limp Bizkit, and them, Ben Zeno, in addition to him, Will Smith, and to Cannabis. If you're listening, this is the end. So you just let them know. All these names right here have been going at it for a long time. Um, this is the end. It's a wrap. Find something else to do. Who he has never stopped going back and forth with, which included MGK. As this album got closer to releasing, I'm gonna guess that he went back on his words as MGK went on Twitter and said that Eminem did not win their beef, mm. and this must have made him once again address Kelly and the fact that he is still delusional about what happened between them, and as MG- He said, yo, he's delusional. I'll just keep it all the way that way. Wow. Um, some people think MJ, MGK won. Um, some people think Eminem won. It's not like a, a landslide where everyone feels like Kendrick beat Drake. Um, if you look in the uh, comment section, um, some people uh, think MGK got the better of that. MGK instigated this into happening by continuing to talk about the beef online recently as we have seen. It almost seems like he wants to have another direct matchup with him, so who knows? Maybe we will get another round of back and forths between these two, which will definitely be a sight to see and right alongside- If we did get another round from these two, would anyone be uh, surprised? Like he said, people keep throwing subs. He said like, this is the end. But with these two, it never looks like it's an end. I heard they might have a song. I don't know how true that is, but I heard they might be doing music. So to see that they're still taking shots at each other is crazy. I thought it was past that. And I thought it was a small, small window of hope that they could have did a song together. MGK, another one of Eminem's longtime rivals that he is still continuing to diss here in a way to just make them look more pathetic than ever is Ja Rule. <laughs> after MGK ja. used Slim Shady persona to make this running theme on the album that he hates little people, mm, he then twists I this joke and puts it on a path that nobody could have expected, as he says that he was referring to Ja Rule the whole time, which is a great way to just humiliate a rapper <laughs> who seems to always be getting more and more disrespected yeah. as time goes on. Yeah. And now beyond these two longtime rivals who at this point have been left in a place where they only have the chance to make themselves look like even more of a fool for messing with Eminem, mm. the only non-musical figure that Eminem comes out with genuine lyrical theory here is Candace Owens, which wow. after Owens has bashed Eminem for quite some time for making fun of his album Revival to them running around and making think pieces about his sexuality, M gave her the response. Yeah, I seen a response uh, from Ken Owens. I, I heard the album. Um, and I knew the next day Candace Owens addressed it. Um, she definitely addressed it. I watched um, part of it when she was a addressing his sexuality, like he said. She was addressing his albums. Um, and she was saying that Eminem still need her to be relevant, um, which we all know that's not the true. Uh, M don't need anyone to be relevant. Oh, he's relevant because of who he is and the work that he put in and because of his massive size of the fan base that he has. He doesn't need Candace Owens at all. And we all know that that she was pretty much asking for and with a series of lyrics that melt down her <laughs> entire brand and what she built and Kenneth, oh i ain't mad at you the tupac i ain't mad at you i'm gonna throw the facts forget she was black back at her Woof. he said Kenneth owners forgot that she was black because she had on a maga hat and was spazzing with this one what's her career off of Eminem puts her on the hot seat in classic Slim Shady fashion, and while he isn't really saying anything that hasn't already been put out there before this, between the lyrical fight, he must have watched the Candace Owens uh, interview too. I'm uh, pretty sure that he did, but in there she was saying Candace Owens was saying like everything that he said in that song already been said about her. He said it almost seemed like he went to Twitter and took what people was already saying and just put it into a song. Um, that's what she was saying in her response. Fire M comes at her with to also the twisted Slim Shady humor, which makes this dynamic between them all the more sick. Mm. Eminem hits Candace Owens with some of the most lyrical fire he has targeted anyone with in a while, and if it wasn't for one other person, this may have ended up as the most memorable diss on the entire record, but beyond all of these, there is one beef on this project that Eminem is ripping the band-aid off mm. after years of having to sugarcoat his words and thoughts, and with this target, it's clear that this person is being lyrically attacked more than anyone else on this project to not create controversy or to spark some sort of sensationalist back and forth. 
but it's because Eminem genuinely despises this person yeah. and is more than happy to finally see their downfall. And I am, of course, talking about Diddy. The who Diddler. Over and over again on this. I already know that he was talking about the Diddler. And as I've been reacting uh, more and more to Eminem, I've been hearing Diddy name more and more. So when that album came out, I heard Diddy name on there a couple of times. I was not surprised. He let you know he do not like Diddy. I don't know what happened in Diddy and Eminem past. Something clearly happened and Eminem is clearly clearly not letting it go and it seems like he's not gonna let it go ever slp doesn't just get dissed by eminem but even gets exposed yeah. as we learn one of the most important figures in the rap world's true thoughts on diddy's relation to the late tupac and biggie as on the track fuel which has one of the best features of the entire year from none other than jid which shot i just did that uh reaction onto that song and like he said a lot of people was in my comments saying saying yo this is the best feature on the song and a lot of people saying this is the best song on the album but to him Eminem delivers one of his best performances on the entire LP, as through his insanely high energy and lyrical tenacity, yeah. he exposes Diddy through some of the most creative but also damaging wordplay that you can possibly write about somebody on a piece of paper, as from sounding out the word rapper and missing a letter so then he can say, he didn't just spell out the word rapper and leave out a P, Diddy. That was tough. He didn't just spell out the word rapper and leave out the P, Diddy. P, Diddy. I think it's crazy. To then claiming that he believes Diddy is the one who is directly the reason why Pac and Biggie are no longer here. Eminem rips all one who is directly- Uh, allegedly P. Diddy is behind uh, both of them because we are, we all know it all started over the quad studio uh, situation. Um, it was three people that was at that studio that did, that did not like uh, Tupac and they all was in the same room. It was uh, Diddy, it was a guy that he used to work with with Motown Records, and it was a guy that Tupac was actually coming there to shoot a song for, I mean, shoot a video, um, I mean, make a song for, it was one of his artists. All three of them people was in one room. They all knew Tupac was coming there, so that's why they saying, like, Diddy, you was in that room. You could have stopped it, but you went along with it, and because that happened to Tupac, um, the same thing happened to Big, and people are alleging you had something to do with that because it seemed like he put Biggie out there on the platter. You had him out in LA with the whole East Coast, West Coast beef. He had no security. They had no blickies. Um, so it almost seemed like you put him on a platter. And because that situation happened, it took the heat off you when you was the one that was behind the whole thing um, starting to begin with. Directly the reason why Pac and Biggie are no longer here. Eminem Sad. rips all the bandages off and Chip. serves as the first major figure in hip hop to speak out against him on this high of a magnitude. Yeah. And beyond these bars, he also puts an emphasis on clowning him throughout the rest of the mm. LP as from bringing up the disturbing footage that leaked of Diddy earlier this year to the situation with him and the destruction of Kid Cudi's car. I know everybody was like, what the, when you heard that, like, uh, Kid Cudi was trying to talk to Cassie. Uh, next thing you know, his car got uh, blown up. I think that's a good way of sending the message. And obviously, uh, Kid Cudi got the message because you didn't see him with Cassie anymore. All with the lyrical wit that will leave you thinking how somebody even thought to say this Dude. through every corner and act of this album. Eminem is bringing up Diddy to not just add to the insane nature of Slim Shady's mind and to add more controversy and buzz to this record. But he's also doing this to truly unveil his feelings about the man who he has clearly not liked for a very long time, yeah. as in years past. Yeah. As Eminem pretty much was forced to apologize to Diddy and say that he was joking when accusing him of the same horrible things on a track like his MGK diss track, Kill Shop. I never knew he had to uh, apologize to Diddy. I never heard that apology, but that's crazy when you got to apologize about something that you know that's true. Eminem just didn't put down a song because he didn't know it was true. And the fact that you had to go apologize for something that in your heart of hearts that you know is true, it's crazy. With everything that's happened recently, he now could say these things without any repercussions <laughs> yeah. and in a year where it feels like in many ways, hip hop is leaning back into its pure roots more than it has been in a very long time. Yeah, it's agree. super powerful to hear Eminem diss one of the most crooked and evil men in all of mm. the genre and on one of the biggest albums the music world will receive all year. Just publicly humiliate him, not just for the things we already know, but for the things many people have been thinking for a very long time. And with that said, there you have it. There is every major diss on Eminem's new album explained, and let me know. What did you think about all the lyrical jabs, shoutouts, and disses Eminem threw out on the it's crazy. Which ones were your favorite? Did you think all of them were necessary? And if I missed any other disses or name drops that may have had some more weight to them, please let me know in the comments below. 
I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And if you want to see how this new Eminem album, Beyond the Disses, just changed everything for his career going forward, check out the suggested video. I think with that album and the way it sounded and the way Eminem sounded on the album, people are going to want another album from him. It's because you still got it. You're still better than 99.9% .9 of the people that's rapping right now. No matter if you're 55, about to turn 56, people are still going to want another album for you because you still got the juice, my man. Video. Trey TV. Let's get it.